Hi, my name is Julianne, and today I'm going to be telling you my top 10 books of 2015. And yes, I'm recording this in January because I'm just late to everything, apparently. But before I get into this video, I just want to thank everyone who subscribed so far because, okay, like, it's seriously insane. I have like 12 subscribers. Like, there are 12 people who are like, yeah, I want to watch your videos. So just like, thank you. Like, this is like really weird and cool. Because I've been wanting to be a YouTuber for like a year and then finally one day I just did it. So yeah, this is like, it's like kind of really sur surreal right now. But yeah, thank you guys. Also, this is really random and doesn't really correlate with books. But I just really didn't know when I would ever do this or like give the shout out to this person. But, um, because I'm not going to make a separate video on it, but there is this singer, his name is Ben J. Pierce, and I am obsessed with his song, Little Game. Oh my goodness, that song is so amazing. Like, you need to go listen to it, because it is so good. So, just go check it out. The music video is phenomenal. Oh my gosh, I want to start a revolution to the song. I'm serious. It, it's so good. It is just so good. And he also has a YouTube channel called Kids POV. <laughs> and Ben is just hilarious, okay? I love him so much. Um, and he's only 16. Oh my gosh, I feel like I've done nothing with my life. So now I'm going to move on to the books, you know, the topic of this video. I read 82 books in 2015, and I did not read one book I disliked. Like, yeah, there's books that I was, like, okay with, and then there's books that I thought were amazing. But there was not one book that I disliked or hated. So, I guess I was really lucky this um, past year. It's kind of hard to whittle down to, like, ten, just ten books that I really want to share with you guys. I feel like there's, like, some books that I feel like, you know, I like at the same, like, level, like, pretty much the same amount. But one is more popular than the other, so I want to talk about the one that's less popular because that one deserves attention. So some of these books I feel like not a lot of people are going to hear about or have heard about, but I just want to bring attention to them because like popular books everyone knows about them, right? So why not share the ones that are less known? I'm going to move on to the top 10 list. This is in no particular order. First book on, well the first um, series on the list. It's called Skullduggery, Skullduggery Pleasant by um, Derek Landy. He is the funniest author of all time. Like, I know it's hard to believe, but he beats out Rick Riordan, okay? Derek Landy is the funniest author I've ever read. He is amazing, okay? Um, Skullduggery Pleasant is like one of the best books series I've ever read in my entire life. It is just so good. I can't even express how amazing this series is. And the ending to the book series is just one of the greatest endings to a series I've ever read. I, I cried. I screamed with joy. I mean, it, it was just, it was a good ending to the series. And I still haven't read all the short stories, but I really want to. It's called Dougie Pleasant. It's just, I love that series so much. Like, it was so great. Because what I really liked, it started out... Like, you know, like, what, Percy Jackson and Harry Potter, you know, the kid with, like, you know, he was really young, just finds out about all this magic and all this awesome stuff. So it's modern middle grade fantasy is, like, the first, I would say, three books, um, from what I remember. But as she, as the character, the main character gets older, the book content seems to get older, you know, so it's, like, the little, the first, you know, couple of books, you know, it's for a younger audience, but as you get through the series as the character is getting older, you know, the book content it gets to be for an older audience. I mean, not like, you know, they swear all the time or something like that, but you know, it, it gets a little um, violent, <laughs> but it's great. Okay, the be these this series has the best fight scenes I've ever read. Okay, like this book is just everything that's awesome. I don't even know how to describe this book. Like, how do you even describe this series? Well, there's, it is so hard, I feel like, like it's, I, I mean, it's like modern fantasy, so you know, you got magic and stuff, but to me, it's all the best parts of Percy Jackson and Harry Potter combined. I mean, it's not even like they're the magical school, it's just like you got magic from the, Perse from the Harry Potter series, 
and then you got the humor from the Percy Jackson series. Like, it just, and it just works so well. I don't even know if I want to go into details, because I feel like whatever I'm going to say is either going to, well, it might draw you in, but for some people I feel are going to be like, what? What the heck? You just want to laugh. All you have to do is read the author note in the beginning. Like, not the author note, um, the dedications are this so funny. Oh my goodness. Like, if you just want to laugh, read the author dedications. You don't even have to read the books. I'm sure just reading the dedications is going to make you want to read the book, okay? Because, like, he is so funny. I love it so much. So go read it. And I probably spent, like, a million years talking about this book, but it, ugh, I love that series so much. One of my favorites ever. So the next book is by this author, um, and actually this is the first, well these next two books are the first books that I've actually reviewed on my channel and my first video. And the first book I wanted to talk about is called Acid by Emma Pass. Acid is so good. Emma Pass is so amazing at writing. It stands for something, that's why it's called Acid. Um, it, but I don't remember what it stood for. I'll just put what it stood for here, in front of me, down below, whatever. Acid is dystopian. Basically, the idea is there's this kid, Jenna, who um, gets thrown into prison for killing her parents. And then the terrorist group that is trying to take down the government breaks her out of prison and are trying to use her to help, you know, take down the government and all this fun stuff. And it is so good. It's just amazing, and I would compare this book to Slated, which is a series that no one's read, but it's awesome, and it's, and it's dystopian as well, and both the endings of those books are just a great twist to the ending of a dystopian novel. I mean, and oh, by the way, this is a standalone, okay, you don't, it's not a trilogy, it, it, it's, it's just one dystopian book, which is really refreshing and awesome. And you don't really have to invest yourself into a series. You just got one book and it wraps up everything nicely. I mean, that's, that's just my opinion, obviously, but I just love the ending to Acid and it's just kick ass, okay? And I love the cover of Acid and, and the next book that I'm going to talk about. Like, oh my goodness, that is what made me want to read the book. I was like, wow, that looks so cool. So that, that book is just phenomenal. Go read it. Number three on my list is Fearless, also by Emma Pass, and that book, that book is post-apocalyptic, and it's, again, like all Emma Pass books, even though that I've only read two and there is only two, it's amazing. Like, I feel like I'm just gonna be saying that all these books on the list are amazing, because, you know, it's my top ten, but, okay. The Fearless, I mean, I've done, I've done a, you know, a video on both of these books, but it's my first video, so I don't know if you guys want to watch that, so I'm gonna explain, I'm explaining these books here. So, The Fearless, um, you know, obviously it takes place in the future, and there was this drug that the government was giving to the soldiers to make them, you know, not feel fear. Unfortunately, it made them kind of, like, psychotic and tried killing everybody, and now the world has gone down the toilet. So, it's awesome. Well, that's like the backstory, but then there's this girl um, who escaped with her family to an island, and where a bunch of other people are, and they're just like trying to live their lives and stay away from the mainland where everything's just terrible. And then one of the fearless comes to the island somehow, and, you know, kidnaps her brother, and so she has to go get her brother with the help of this other person. She like takes these um, genres that a lot of authors do, but then she puts her own unique twist on them, and I just love that. So Emma Pass, one of my favorite authors ever, and, and she only has like two books out. So the fourth book on my list is from is by this by the third funniest author ever. First it's Derek Landy, then you got Rick Riordan, and now you have Lich McBride, who wrote Firebug. And Firebug is so funny. I, every time I think about it, I smile. Like, it is just so good. It is so good. Like, I, oh my goodness. I don't know how Lish McBride does it. Lish McBride, her writing style reminds me of my own. And she, her humor is like Rick Riordan. 
and but you know obviously it's her own but you know there's just stuff that happens where I'm like that is totally a Rick Riordan move and I love it so it's just awesome and I don't even know how, how to describe this book okay let, let's try to describe this book okay and you gotta stick with me here okay like some people are gonna be like oh that is amazing and other people are gonna be like yeah um bye okay I'm just gonna leave now this is, sounds weird just stick with me okay there is a magical mafia, okay? Mafia made up of supernatural creatures called the Katori, ruled by Venus, this vampire who I hate and want to punch in the face. So, and then there's this girl, Eva, who is in their debt. So basically she has to, she, she's an assassin for them. And she's only like 16? So Eva has to basically kill people for the Katori. Or bring them in, if, you know, if needed, because she is a firebug. Basically, firebugs are rare. They're they're people who can, I know, I know this is a shock, but um, they can make, you know, control fire. I know, right? Like, who who would have thought a firebug could do that, right? Yeah, and it's just awesome, <laughs> and it just surprises me that no one has read this book and that no one like even knows who Lish McBride is like it's so weird like the thing about me is I have this gift of finding underrated books like I find the most amazing books that no one has heard of and it's both a blessing and a curse because like you know I don't get spoiled like is anyone gonna spoil me on the sequel to this book no is anyone gonna spoil me on any Chris Wooding book Nope. Like, I don't get spoiled on any book that, well, you know, the underrated books, because no one's read them. But the problem is, is when I'm done, and I need to talk to someone about it, there's no one there. So, it's, it's both a blessing and a curse. I don't know how I do it, but I just, I'm so good at finding underrated things. I'm so lucky that I can, because, um, th I needed this book in my life. I needed Hold Me Close to Necromancer, like, that book... It's so funny. Like I laughed at like every page. Like this, this, Lister McBride is just so funny, and you need to read one of her books at least. Okay, it's so good. It is so good. Okay, gotta move on from talking about Lister McBride. This next book is actually popular. Like people have heard of it. If you haven't, where have you been? And so the fifth book on my list is Winter by Marissa Meyer. Just a really great conclusion to the Lunar Chronicles, and I just I don't even want to need to describe this book. It's like a futuristic sci-fi fairy tale retelling. Okay, it's awesome and epic, and the ending, the conclusion is just phenomenal. And I just don't think I need to really go into details because everybody's heard of it. And if you haven't read the series, you should. I just really like this book a lot. So obviously, it's on the video. Sword of Summer is the sixth book on my list, and it is just beautiful. Because, you know, there was this book, you might have heard of it, called Blood of Olympus, and it wasn't the best. Rick Riordan could have done better. A lot better. A lot, lot better. <laughs> Sorry, Blood of Olympus is just... Uh. Anyways, so I was worried about Magnus Chase. I was like, D is Rick Riordan, like declining is he just not gonna write any more good books I loved every second of Magnus Chase it was just glorious so basically if you haven't heard there's this guy named Rick Ryden who wrote the Percy Jackson series which is about Greek mythology then he wrote a spin-off about Roman mythology and while he's writing that spin-off he was writing another series about Egyptian mythology and now he's writing he wrote a book called Magnus Chase and this is about Norse, myth Norse mythology and it's it's just beautiful. I will remember no names. I can't pronounce anything. The, the nine worlds? Nope. Not gonna remember any of that. It was so funny and it was just so good. It was just great to have Rick Ryan and Seymour back in my life. Uh, and it, it was just so good. I liked it a lot. And it's so good. It's so good. So, I, I can't wait for the sequel. So yeah, you should. If you have not read any Percy Jackson book, you should you should go read them. Um, by the way, you don't have to read any of the Percy Jackson books or anything like that to read this book. 
but I kind of recommend it because I reference back to it and it's a lot more funnier when you've read the other books because there's just something he says about a sword. I'm just gonna leave it at that. Okay, so this next book I really, really want to do a book review on and it's just amazing. Like, I can't get over how amazing this book is. And it's Illuminae by Amy Kaufman and J. Kristoff. Almost got through that. It's just glorious. The cover makes made me want to read this book, like, so much. Like, I heard good things about it, but, like, look at that. This is just beautiful. Like, so I, ha I had to get this book. Like, I feel like you should just go into this book not knowing anything. I knew, like, the beginning part, like, you know, there's an, it's sci-fi, so it takes place in the future, in space, there's an illegal mining operation thing going on, and then the rival company attacks them, and then there's a bunch of refugees, because it's like a town, so like a bunch of people, there's like two, over 2,000 people that are refugees on the ship, and they're being like hunted down by the other ship, that's pretty much all you need to know. Basically how I would describe this book is like, the Maze Runner meets eagle eye so and it i don't think any of your feelings on those two stories are going to affect your feelings on this like if you hate the maze runner it does not necessarily mean you're going to hate this book if you love the maze runner it doesn't mean you're going to necessarily like this book okay and you know but um i don't know how you can hate this book like it it was just so good okay i cried like four times it was so good and literally more than once i had goosebumps like it was just speechless okay like you just read it read it read it but that book is pretty popular so i feel like there's a lot of hype for good reason this next book um i don't think it's that popular but i'm sure some people have heard of it and it's called pneumonia by noel stevenson and this book was just so good and he uh, was just so cute and adorable Got a little sad at times, but oh, it was just so good. It's a graphic novel. It's like the first graphic novel that I've read. So there you go. It's just so cute, and I like it a lot. Like, seriously. I was hooked by the second page. Like, it. see, I have this rule that if there's a book that can make me laugh in the store, I have to buy it. So this book made me laugh out loud by the second page. So I was like, I must read it's just like one of those books where it's like, you know, is the hero really a hero? Is the villain really a villain? It, it, just go read it. It's, it's, it's beautiful. So this next book is also really popular, but I don't have it on me because my friend's borrowing it. And this book is called Library of Souls by Ransom Riggs. It was awesome. Great way to end a trilogy. I don't know why I keep doing this. Just... Ugh, Library Souls. I love that book. It's the third book in this Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children series. I love that series so much. It was just so good. It was a great way to end that series. I don't even need to describe it. Just go check out Jesse the Reader's channel and I'm sure you'll just find everything you can on that series. Like, I, I don't even need to go into details. All you need to know is that it's awesome and you should read it. And the next book on my list um, is a book by Chris Wooding. No one knows who Chris Wooding is, but that's okay. And it's called The Haunting of Eliza Bell Cray. I was not trying to rhyme there, but apparently I did. The Haunting of Eliza Bell Cray is just fantastic. I love it so much. Yeah, Stitch Face, second favorite serial killer, I think. Obviously my first being Moriarty from the TV show Sherlock, not the movie. Like, who cares about that one? The Haunting of Eliza Bell Cray, again, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like, think of those books that take place in the 1800s in London, and then just think of an alternate universe where, there's, where all the monsters and things that go bump in the night are actually there. So you've got um, Witch Hunters, which it's not W-I-T-C-H, it's W-Y ch some something like that is a weird spelling but um w these witch hunters you know obviously they hunt down the um monsters or whatever that's running around town and all this stuff and the main character daniel fox i just want to say like all the names in this book are just amazing like on point chris wooding you got your main character daniel fox and he finds this girl in a 
abandoned building. Her name's Eliza Bill Cray. Ha haunting, the haunting of Eliza Bill Cray. Um, and she's like got possessed or something by some ghost. Um, and then you find out why and all this fun stuff. And um, on top of that, there's a Illuminati like cult that's trying to like, I don't even know, destroy the world. Um, it's been a while since I read it. <laughs> I just want to say Chris Wooding is so good at world building. Like, I don't even know how he does it. Like, oh my gosh. Yeah, the, the world of, of The Haunting of Eliza Bell Cray, like, I want more books just to explore that world more because it's just so unique. Like, all of his books are so unique and his storylines are so good. Yeah, Chris Wooding, one of the greatest authors of all time, and yet no one's heard of him. But you should totally, totally read Chris Wooding books because he's awesome. And and read all the underrated books that I showed you guys because it's so good. So good. So... I think I'm done with this review. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in my next video. <laughs> Bye! Whoa. <laughs> These are so heavy. <laughs> oh, I should show the spines. Got this, got this, got this. Ugh. Oh my god. <laughs> like, I love Acid so much. The book. <laughs> I really like Acid a lot. Um, I said that before. <laughs> and then there's this girl, Ava. Okay. Because she is a firebug. But the, I liked all the characters except for the ones that I hated. I wanted a freaking battle. Did I get a battle? Okay, I got five minutes of a battle. I got five minutes. I wanted a battle, okay? It was amazing. Um, I think that's the word of the video, is amazing. Is I think it is. I think I've used that a lot. Okay, it was... I'm just gonna say amazing again. Sorry. And that, I'm just gonna leave it at that. Yeah. From those, there are just... Yeah. It, I don't even know how to, um, speak, apparently.